Just gonna do a really quick run through of some code I just wrote as another example of how you can build a web scraper using Selenium and some of the stuff attached around that. So the point of this scraper is to scrape eventually the different software stacks used by different companies. And the way I'm gonna approach that is by scraping different job postings off the internet. So uh, to start off with, when I initialize, I've got a number of different roles I wanna search for, a number of different companies that I wanna search for, and then I shuffle those companies just so it gets them uh, a random order. If I restart the scraper, it doesn't always start from the same point and I have to wait until it gets to the end. Just a little convenience there whilst I was developing this. To start off with, it goes and it gets google.com and then it creates permutations of the different role names and companies. So instead of doing a nested for loop, I actually just generate all of the different possible permutations in advance and then iterate through them in one for loop. Then I call this method called get all jobs. And what that does is it takes in a role name and a company name. It generates a query, just simply, I looked at online when I was on uh, Google on the jobs page, which looked like this. Number of different jobs there. And I just looked at the query string and, and uh, just found out how that is formatted. And it looks like the query goes in there after the queue. And I have basically just replaced what was in there from when I searched it with the role name and the company name. And that's what I've done here. So I've just basically taken that exact query and then filled in the role name and the company name. And then I've also replaced any spaces with pluses just so it fits the format which Google expects on Google Jobs. And it shows me all the different job listings. This is what I'm gonna scrape. I'm gonna scrape the company names and the descriptions here. I'm gonna to have to do a few other things on the way to make that work in the way that I want it to. So what did I do then? I basically asked my web driver from Selenium to get the query. And what I haven't covered here is that actually a lot of this stuff is happening in the background because my scraper inherits from another scraper, which sets up all of the stuff which happens in the initialization. So I won't go too into the details there, but let's look at it quickly. Here's the parent class, which my uh, scraper inherits from. It does a few things, including setting up Chrome um, in a specialized way. You don't need to worry about that too much, but eventually it initializes a driver attribute for this class called webdriver.chrome. And uh, and those are all the methods which I use there. Really, that, that's the only important thing. Basically just initializes a web driver. So whenever I inherit from that bot class, I can have all of the attributes, including the driver, in this stack scraper class. So that's how I'm using the, the driver here. It's already been initialized when I initialized the parent, which I did with this call here. Super to get all the attributes and methods of the parent class. And then from those, I wanted the initializer of the parent class and that initialized the, the, uh, the parent. So then when I've done that, I've been able to find all the listings. So just done webdriver.findElement, element, sorry, find all of the elements by XPath. Here's the XPath path I used. As usual, it's really easy to read these if you read them in reverse order. So what I'm looking for here is, is items where the attribute class is equal to this thing. I'm looking for div elements, which are located anywhere on the page. So if I look in the browser here, you can see how I found that. So if I hover over here using my selector, um, you can see, you should be able to see this ID, this class name somewhere, PWJ EAC. So where is that? It's here. So you can see that when I highlight it, that's just one of the listings. And if I, if I look in the, in the DOM over here, the document object model, just the layout of the page, the HTML, I can see there's a number of different list items. I could have found those, but I found it pretty easy actually just to find the div class inside. And so there again, that's the listing, which I found. So. I've asked Selenium to find all of those elements, and then I've just uh, waited one second. I can't remember exactly why I did that, but I think it was just so they've all loaded fully or something like that. And then for each of them, I have I found I had to use this method, scroll into view. So I had to look this up online and find out, okay, how do I scroll them into view? Because once they're off the page, I couldn't click them. So it's pretty easy, just use this um, method of the uh, Selenium Chrome driver execute script. What that does is it takes in some JavaScript in string format and it, uh, and it executes that JavaScript. In this case, I can actually pass in an argument as well, which is my element that's used in the JavaScript to get the first argument. And then it basically finds that element on the page and scrolls it into true. 
interview. I literally just uh, just copied that from Stack Overflow. I didn't need to understand how that was working under the hood. I just needed to make sure I was clear about what it was doing and that that was the same thing that I wanted to do, which it was. So I copied it in here, defined it in a method, and then I used it in several places in this scraper class. So I used that above here to scroll the listing to view. So when it wants to get a listing, it scrolls that one up to the top. And then it clicks on the listing to expand it. It opens this thing. And then it needs to find this button to expand it and show the full description. So after it's clicked the listing, it's opened it. And then I basically just sleep for 0.5 seconds to let it load in fully. And then I needed to get the job. And so that's where I'm getting the description. I need to hit that button, do other things as well. So in that method, get job, I basically just immediately return a dictionary, but the values of that dictionary are got from my different methods of this class. So one of them gets a job ID, one of them gets the company, one of them gets the job description. The job description, it does this. It finds the container of the job description with these with this class name using an X path. Again, I want to find developments anywhere on the page that have the attribute class equal to this. So that was, where was that? Which one was that? W-H-A-Z. Yeah, so that was this. So I found this within each page. That was what I called the job container. And then I tried to expand the description button. So I found the element, which was the description button. Um, it, was, it was a number of divs in there. I probably could have replaced that with something simpler, like dot slash 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 div. So this would say find, actually I could have even made that even simpler, probably like this. So from this element, find div elements that are anywhere within the current web element that's been selected with the attribute class equal to this. That was what I wanted to find. And so that, that C D X Z E F E, that should have given me the, um, that should have given me the button. Yeah. So I, and that's, that selects this button here. That's the thing that I want to click. So I then use my scroll method into scroll into view method again to scroll that button into view. And then I clicked on it. And uh, if there was no scroll, uh, if there was no expand description button, I just passed over that. So that was fine. And then I managed to get the description by just getting an element within that, which was somewhere quite deep in there. Uh, what was it? It was, it was basically this one. Yeah, it was that. That's the one. Yeah. Basically get that span element. After I click that button, it removes this dot, dot, dot and shows the full thing. I get that element and just get it dot text attribute. That's the description. So I returned that and that gets put in my description attribute here. For the job ID, I found that in the URL, there was a unique ID for each job. This thing up here. So I basically just used the URL lib.pass URL, passed in self.driver.current URL to give it the URL. That this thing passes it as a URL and basically allows you to access the query string parameters and stuff. I found that from that, it had an attribute called fragment, which was um, was basically like a just the section of the URL, which was the query strings. And then I used this URL URL lib.pass.pass queues method, which I just looked up, which gave me a dictionary, which had the different names of the query string parameters as um, keys. So I just selected the one which I wanted. That was the key there. And then I selected the uh, zeroth item because it returns you a list that got me the ID. Getting the company, uh, that was a simple job of just finding the element which shows the company and then getting the text within that. It was just uh, this thing up here, pretty simple. And then at the end of that, I had this job. So I'd called that, if I ran into any issues, which I did find. So firstly, I tried to get all the jobs without, and, and I tried to debug all the issues that I, that I, that I found as, as I went along. So that I knew that the issues which I needed to solve could be solved, but there were some issues which were not my fault. So I wanted to accept and continue them. So once I debugged everything that I could, I found that there were some jobs which were just empty. They just had nothing in. So that's not an issue on my side. That's an issue on Google Jobs side. So I just continued and skipped over those once I was confident that all of the other things inside there were working correctly. And then I call this method called save job. All that one does uh, is it finds a folder where it's going to save the it's going to save the job, which I just had a folder for each of the different roles and a folder for each company. 
and then it creates that directory if it doesn't yet exist, otherwise it doesn't throw an error. And then it adds a um, the job ID on the end of that to the file path. I probably should have given that a JSON extension, but whatever. And that that's that's pointing to this file here. And then it just says if that if that path exists, um, print that it already exists. Otherwise, just return it because you don't need to recollect it again. Otherwise, dump your new job object, which is that dictionary, into that file, and uh, give it the indentation for so it looks nice in JSON. And I end up with this. This is what I get. So. That's really the whole thing. At the end of that, I've just got if name equals main. So if I run this file directly from the terminal with a command like python main.py, then this is going to be the main file and it's going to run. It's going to initialize that stack scraper. In the initializer, it gets all the jobs. That's going to run and get all of these. If I run that few now, you'll see what it does. It goes to Google, refreshes by going to the Google homepage, goes to the um, different job listings, cycles through them expands the description, gets all the details, and down here you can say I've already run it, so it's um it's saying that they already exist. So that was Whirlwind Tor on my latest web scraper, which I'm gonna to use to analyze the different stacks used at all these different companies. I'm gonna do that on a regular basis to make sure I can keep up, up to date with it um, automatically, as well as having all the conversations which I'm having on the side. And hopefully that, was, that gives you a good insight into how I lay these kind of things out. So with that, you should be able to build more of these advanced scrapers and copy my layout because this is a pretty good layout you can see um, it's good code because everything that relates to one thing is bundled together within one method all those methods which relate to the same thing are bundled together within one class i've used inheritance to um, abstract away all of the stuff which is just boilerplate it's not specific to this class into the bot class and um, i've used some kind of good practices in here like error handling and other things it's not perfect but it's, it's pretty good so hopefully that's useful